right? I'm out in the yard here today on this eight meter that I've been stripping here. We're stripping the paint off of it. We're gonna prepare the surface completely. We're gonna uh, board it out, smooth it up very nicely. I do have some other work to do on it, some planks to put in it and different things, but I'm gonna basically concentrate on how it is that I remove this paint and it just has a massive amount of paint on it. And uh, we didn't want to use paint remover and go through thousands of dollars worth of product. So we decided, well, we just cook it off with a heat shrink gun. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So what I have to do is wet the wood here. I'm just using salt water right out of the ocean here. And I'm just going to create a little wet barrier there where I'm not trying to remove paint. I'm actually going to wet the bulwark a little bit. And it doesn't really matter if I burn that varnish a little bit because we're going we're gonna to take and plane that back. But so now we got that nice and wet there. It's like a protective barrier. And we're going to pick up the heat shrink gun. You have to be pretty careful using one of these. You need to keep the gun up on top of the paint. You wouldn't want to swing the gun over onto the wood for any length of time because you'll scorch the wood. So you have to be pretty careful with it. And, uh, Keep your hands out of the way, obviously, but you get the gun onto the paint and watch the paint bubble, then move the gun off to the left-hand side, you know, and use your putty knife, and it scrapes the paint right off. This works just terrific, just about in any kind of paint. There's no kind of paint that stands up to the heat shrink gun. So we're able to go over the entire boat like this, and uh, it doesn't take all that long. I can strip this whole boat in a day very easily. All right, you can see that I've removed the paint with the putty knife and the heat shrink gun, and now I have some residual places here that I couldn't quite get off because the paint's a little bit more stuck to the seam compound, actually, than it is to the wood. And I can use a paint scraper or I can use this tool. This is, like I call it, it's my paint file, and it's made of three-quarter inch bandsaw blades. And I just threw it across it. It works especially nice on a rounded hull. Just gets a little of that residual stuff off the seams there. There's a number of ways to use it. You can bend it and drag it like that. Once I get some of that off, I'm gonna set that down and go right into an electric plane. When you're using the plane, you have to keep in mind not to set the blades in too deep or remove too much wood or anything like that. You can take a little bit of the wood off and some of the residual paint, but you're, you're looking not to make the hull any thinner, really. It's just there's some dead wood under the paint, so it doesn't hurt to take a tiniest little bit of wood off. I've electric planed it now, I've completed that process and uh, you can probably see that I've taken off quite a bit more up in here and in here because this boat had been sanded many, many times and what most people are looking at or when they're sanding, the standing up here is right here and that's the only place they sand. So what happens is it gets into a depression up in here in the top sides and you wouldn't want that because it would reflect the light all the wrong way. So I've remedied that by relieving some material from here and removing some material from here and now I'm going to sand it because it's got planar marks and things in it although it's nice and fair and true it's just a little rough so I'm going to go over it with this now this is a rotary sander it's got a very rough paper on it 40 grit it's on a very hard pad it's not a soft pad so it it it, it sands nice and flat actually but uh, I'm going to run it on a very very low speed and I've got to hold it in a manner that stops it from shaking or bouncing around and grinding or putting any grinder marks in the hull. And if you should stop in any one spot, it's going to put grinder marks in it. So you've got to keep the sander moving at all times and you've got to keep a nice even pressure on it and keep the pad down nice and flat. All right, I'd just like to show you here, this is a completed section of the hull and I'm just feeling it with my hand right now and it feels nice and fair. And you can see that I've raked out the seam compound out from in the seams. Now this boat wasn't originally caulked, but it's opened up some over the years and people have played with it and reefed it out before. So now we have to reef this seam compound out and caulk it again. Now there's no cotton underneath it, it's just seam compound. Somebody's reefed it previous and put some seam compound in there. And we're just gonna remove that because we're gonna re-caulk it and, uh, and uh, re-seam compound it. So this is just a little hook made out of a piece of 3 8 inch coal roll steel. And uh, there's a few tricks to it. When you, uh, 
as you pull along, you don't want to pull out of the seam and then go down alongside of it. So as you pull out, you pull away from the hull like that, see? That way you don't have any chance of, of wrecking the seam. And the reason why I've done that is because the seam compound is quite a bit harder actually than the, the uh, fur plank in itself. So that when you board it, you end up having the seams high again. So I just take the seam compound out of the way first and now I've sanded it with that rotary sander. So most of the sanding scratches are actually in it this direction here. But I haven't done any fairing with that sander because it's pretty much impossible. What you want to do is sand it down till just a little fluttery uh, planar marks come off. So you haven't altered the shape of the surface, you've only smoothed it up. Now it's got these cross hatch marks in it like this from the sander and that's really an advantage to me now because what I'm going to do now is I'm going to board it here with just a flexible board with a couple blocks of wood on it, a couple pieces of paper stuck in the center, and it's basically a long board. Now those cross marks makes it easier for me to sand it this direction. It's already been sanded this way, and now I'm gonna sand it longitudinally. It's going to grade the hull just nicely so that when it's primed and painted, it won't show any swirl of marks or anything like that, and uh, it's going to be a nice, fair job when we're done. And that is a complete fairing job right there.